Welcome back to Local Edge Radio right here on 880 The Revolution, Asheville's one and only progressive talk. Well, every Wednesday afternoon, folks, right around this time, we talk about the new issue of the Mountain Express that drops in purple boxes everywhere on Wednesday morning, bright and early. Now, you can find it online line at mountainx.com, but on the front of the Mountain Express this week, a call to arms. Cytel workers push for union. Now, very ironic. We had Mark Case on the show yesterday um, from the AFL-CIO right here in Western North Carolina. And David penned this article, and he's here to tell us all about it. David, welcome back to Local Edge Radio. Always a pleasure. So, uh, now this Cytel thing has been brewing for a while. I touched on it maybe three months ago, maybe even more that I heard some of the workers were trying to get some sort of representation that some a lot of the part-time workers had turned into full-time workers and had worked for the company for a while. So uh, take us through um, Cytel, uh, the employees' uh, quest to unionize. Well, uh, Cytel, because Cytel calls here in Asheville, which is on Hendersonville Road, uh, it's a, kind of a windowless block sort of thing flanked by the Walmart and Mexican restaurant. It's kind of nestled in there in Hendersonville Road. About 600 people work there. Have you ever worked in one? Uh, I have not worked in one of those. Um, I've, I've worked fun at many jobs, not call centers before, though. Okay. Uh, though uh, a lot of people around town have worked for this another call center. It's, it's a surprisingly sizable industry here in Asheville. And last uh, last winter, there were uh, a number of concerns. Uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, according to a number of people, was that uh, this facility had had one of the set of bathrooms shut down for uh, for uh, repairs, renovations, what have you, and that this had left the workers with what they felt was extremely minimal amount number of bathrooms for the number of people working, and that they are so they're closely watched and penalized if they're away from their desk for for too long, and so um, one in uh, uh, a uh, number of uh, so they started kind of discussing what were their options. They, according to a number of them, they petitioned management and feel, they didn't feel that went anywhere. They had a number of complaints about uh, uh, everything from other working conditions to wages. Uh, the wages there uh, start at eight dollars an hour, according to a number of the employees, uh, and end at nine fifty unless you're in management. Uh, that that means the top amount is below the the um, it's nine eighty five that is uh, qualified as a living wage with health care. Uh, which I think is eleven something um, with uh, with without health care uh, for this area. That's what it says on the wall out there, Jim and I have seen it. We're still doing the math. <laughs> stuff. Indeed. Doing so, uh, so uh, well, they approach the uh, the um, the I, uh, IBW, okay. um, specifically a man named uh, Ken Ashworth, one of the workers there. They had to interview him, though he was far from the only worker with a concern about this or kind of a desire for for what they see as more representation. Uh, and the IBEW uh, has come in, and in the months since, initially this kind of kind of made the news when when there was um, there was the news about the bathroom issues. The Southtown employees were trying to organize something, and also that the IBEW was filing some complaints with the National Labor Relations Board, saying that there have been attempts to um, unfairly take down union literature uh, and. Uh, you know, threaten employees for for wanting to unionize. Well, let me ask you this: Is there some sort of barometer there? Is not a barometer is not the proper term as far as when a company has a, you know, how many employees they 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 really they can use unionize? I mean, is there a? Well, there's uh, this is actually gets into a whole kind of interesting thicket of issues. And the the interesting thing about the story is it's one, something that I I call in reporting an iceberg issue. You have this incident, Cytel. Uh, which is certainly certainly very important in its own right, but it also touches on a lot of very larger issues. WNC is, by a lot of accounts, the least unionized part of the least unionized state in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, North Carolina is has a I think it's like two point nine percent union workers, which is the lowest the lowest in the entire country. Mm-hmm. And so this was uh, so this drive itself, and it's it's uh, according to the people involved in it, they say it's gained steam in the months since the original complaint. Uh, that uh, that they claim to have almost a third of the workers at this plant have or this call center have now signed cards authorizing the union to represent them. So it sounds like it's very rare that an employee would call them up and say, "Hey, 
we've got some complaints. We want to explore our options. It yes. just doesn't sound like it happens out in this part of the state. Yes, though, according to a number of the union officials, it's starting to happen much more since the recession. Mm. Uh, they say that they have, uh, they've, while a number of unions have had a, in this area, with loss of manufacturing jobs and other things, have had a steady decline in membership. They say that it's starting, they're starting to see some life, starting to bounce back uh, for the union's part. And uh, the IBW local that is involved in this, they go back 110 years in the area. Organized labor does have a history here. Um, but that a lot of them are being more proactive. Uh, if someone calls them, even if it's not a type of worker they represent, they'll try to connect them now with another union that, that might represent them. Uh, that they're, they're being more proactive in, in these sort of, uh, sort of recruitment drives if, if there are workers at an area that they feel are open to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so to some degree, it'll be interesting to see if this is, uh, if, if the Cytel drive is kind of a, a unique sort of event. I mean, this has not happened in ages. That I talked to an official at the state AFL-CIO, and she said that she couldn't recall the last time there was a union drive of any of any size in, in Asheville. Now, now just, David, are you using names of employees in there, in the article? Some of the employees were willing to go on the record, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, worth, what if they're let go? I mean, do they have protection from something like that? As a matter of fact, that's kind of, uh, we have a, a, a little a small sidebar that, that excerpts some of the rights of the National Labor Relations Board says that under federal law, no matter what state they work in or what business they work for, uh, that employees have. And employees do have the right to discuss a union. They have a right to discuss their wages and working conditions, and they have the right to organize for a union. And actually, one with of the, the media, too, uh, they have the right to discuss the media if they wish. Yes. OK. Uh, now, there are maybe other provisions, uh, you know, for example, that, that a company may have. But there are this is kind of a mix of state and federal law. North Carolina has uh, does have a right to work law, which Right. doesn't require uh, employees at a place to become a union and places some other limitations on unions and some other, like pub the public sector. Uh, but at the same time, federal law also plays an important role here, and federal law guarantees certain rights that workers have, and one of those is, is that they, they do have a right to try to form a union. They have a right to openly discuss that. Interestingly, uh, one of the complaints the IBW has sent to the, to the Labor Relations Board was about Cytel's social media policy which it said violated the workers' rights by not all, by saying they couldn't discuss their uh, the, their conditions or the company or without prior approval. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. Eventually they fit, fixed the bathroom, right? Yes. I mean, they they did took it, care of some of the little things. That, that issue has actually been been, been fixed. Uh, a number of the employees complained was that it went for, so for months. It just seems so silly why they just wouldn't fix it. Well, and this was, as I said, this was a straw that broke the camel's back. There are other longer-term issues here with pay and working conditions. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's what these workers feel like, that they need a union to represent them. In. Did you go over there and hang out? Uh, I uh, was not able to make it into the Cytel plan itself. Why don't you uh, go in there undercover? Uh, like undercover. you want a jo job. Yeah, I don't know. I'm might Come be on. to identify. So I'll be excellent uh, doing this. Third I, shift. I, 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 I talked to a number <laughs> of the workers. Uh, I talked about the conditions to a number of, of people we found that had worked at Cytel and had left before this drive of their own accord to verify some of this information. Uh, we talked to a number of the, the union officials about kind of how they see not just this union drive, but the changing kind of role of unions mm -hmm. today in WNC and in, in the country at large. And we tried to get Cytel to talk. We really did. I called so many different offices. I called the national office um, and nothing. Uh, they, uh, we, we managed to get some information from some statements some of their executives had made to trade publications about their, you know, their thoughts on unions and collective bargaining and things like that. But uh, they are a, a very taciturn company when it comes to speaking to the media. Well, it sounds like this could be the start of something. If, um, you know, if your sources are telling you they're starting to get more and more people, you know, start to ask questions, can we be represented? Can we unionize? Do we have a voice, um, you know, in the process? At least they're seeking that information. Yes. And uh, a lot of, I mean, I've heard uh, over the years, a lot of people don't even think unions are, are possible in North Carolina. I think it's mm -hmm. a law, which is, is not the case. There's federal law that, that supersedes that. Yeah, is, Mark and I touched on that. but It still, is more difficult, but it is, uh, and then some other areas, it is certainly a less union-friendly environment legally, but it is not impossible. There are unions here. I didn't know that. So an employee can discuss the conditions, their wages uh, to the media, and they cannot be fired. Well, they can discuss their wages, benefits, other employments, and uh, and union organizing with with coworkers or a union. And also, they can they can discuss these issues. They can openly try to organize for a union, handing out leaflets. 
uh, that sort of stuff. And that includes if they want to, if they want to talk about those issues uh, publicly, uh, they can't be penalized for their for their union activity. Now, can you talk about somebody else? Could could I talk about how Jim treats me? I mean, would that be <laughs> is that crossing the line? Because uh, I can that, when we come back after the break. I can. Oh, he's he's horrible to you. I'm <laughs> sure. Well, this is interesting, folks, and we want to continue this conversation with David. Plus, there's plenty other things in this issue. It's a really good one. Uh, a diversity of stories. So we're going to take a quick break here on Local Edge Radio, and we'll be back in just a second as we go through the rest of this week's Mountain Express. Welcome back to Local Edge Radio right here on 880 The Revolution, Asheville's Progressive Talk. Just David today from the Mountain Express. No Jake. Where's Jake? Still walking across the Westgate Bridge? <laughs> Jake is uh, Jake is hard at work. He and, is. And, uh, and he celebrated his birthday yesterday. Uh, did so, he? Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's. Uh, I bet you did some bar hopping. Uh, well, I'm. I'm. I'm sure. Sure, he did. He's. He, he's one to celebrate. Did you not get so. invited? Uh, well, uh, he was out of work that day. So. <laughs> he was out of work. He was on the river did somewhere. You? I think yeah. floating down the river. Um, well, really good story on Sitel, and I think a lot of people have driven past Sitel or seen it if they've gone up to Walmart mm-hmm. or, or you know what used to be Bailey's there on the the corner maybe. I believe it's a Mexican restaurant now, so they've seen it, but just never known what they, yeah, what they do, the kind of now, co- yeah. contracts they get. I know they've done some work for Blue Cross Blue Shield, different credit card companies, it's mostly what, the financial and health industries. Is, is that what, right? Is what they they do call center work for, and that's across. And this is a huge company. It should be emphasizing they took in one three billion in revenues last year. Uh, they have they have you know call centers, and I think it's like twenty five twenty six countries. Wonder uh, if they have problems in the other states with. Folks wanting to union. We, we couldn't find any hard information on how much of Sitel's locations are unionized, uh, but one of their executives has talked that in, especially in countries with with a much higher union rate than this one, they are they do have locations where they collectively bargain with the union and deal with that union. Mm-hmm. So it's not unheard of. So uh, let's move forward, but kind of look back a little bit. Bell Share two thousand and twelve.